He gives us a, a new terminology. He says we need to transcend this identification we have with stuff, this idea that we uh, define ourselves based on outer self-worth, uh, that we need to transcend that. And we need to go to something different. And he calls it soul esteem. Rather than self-esteem, soul esteem. How many of you have ever heard soul esteem? Anybody? Great. We're here, here, here for the first time here in, in Oak Ridge, California. Let's say it, soul esteem. Soul, soul, soul esteem. esteem. Okay, okay. okay thanks so much for that. Thank you. Knock and sit down. This is it. This is the word for today. Uh, Eckhart Tolle, and we all know about Krishnamurta. How many know about Krishnamurta? In one of his books, he talks about Krishnamurta. And what I like about the story is that um, this Indian uh, traveler, this Indian philosopher, this Indian mystic, uh, defined what we mean by soul esteem. It's kind of cool. Uh, he liked to go around telling people, hey, listen, folks, if you want to experience a joy-filled, abundant life, you've got to transcend identifying with the form. That's what the world for. You've got to stop doing that. Otherwise, you cannot experience a joy-filled, Human life, because everything's too fluctuating. You know, you're going to have that roller coaster of depression, happiness, depression, happiness. My God, we're without lights for a whole week. You know, all this stuff. The, the tree fell on the house and all this stuff. But anyway, he said that you need to transcend that. And, uh, and he, he uh, was getting towards a later part of his life. He'd uh, travel around for about 50 years. People followed him around, uh, wanting to listen to him. He had so much to offer. So one day, he, uh, it was towards the end of his life, he said, how many of you would like to know my secret? Wow, his secret of experiencing profound joy and abundance in his life. And many of the people thought, my gosh, after all these years, I've traveled and listened to this guy for many years, we're finally going to discover the secret of experiencing joy-filled, abundant life. And he said, I don't mind what happens. That's the secret. I don't mind what happens. Let's repeat that. I think it's empowering. It's empowering. I don't mind what happens. What does this mean? It means that we transcend the human experience. That we move beyond it knowing full well that we are this dynamic creative energy that's here on purpose to experience the world of form and all the activities of the world of form that we're here to learn to be a spiritual soul operating and how to function in a human body. Isn't that incredible? I love that. Do you like that? I like that. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> and so what this means is that we, uh, as we travel through, through, through life, um, we develop a compassion for everything that's going on. Uh, we, we allow people in our own conscience to be themselves without judgment. We don't want people to be exactly like us. We look at every instance, every person, every relationship as a beautiful expression of the divine. And it's that diversity, that discernment that's so cool that everybody can be themselves and be that living expression of God. And every person is at that place in their own development to where they're learning to be a soul in a human body. And they're doing it in their own ways. Isn't that absolutely incredible? That's what a soul esteem is all about. It means that when something happens to us, we don't say, why is this happening to us? We say, why is this happening for me? Why is, instead of, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening for me? We get this perspective that God, we can't be half pregnant. Either God is and God is all there is. God is and God is all there is. That means everything that we experience in this uh, human plane of existence is God designed. I know some of you ministers may chew on me that we're deists or not, but it's God designed. What that means is it's a loving presence of experience that we look at. And if we can accept everything from that neutral point of view, saying everything that's happened to me right now, there's a hidden mystery of greater good in it. Amen. No matter. Amen. Say amen. I like it. Amen. Amen is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
So, so and I wrote this up because I, I don't want to forget it. Soul esteem is the foundation of inner authority. Without it, we don't possess ourselves. We are possessed by the world. So soul esteem is our necessity. If we want to experience a joy-filled, abundant life, we got to do it. And if we don't, we have the right to say, no, we don't need to do this. I, I like being miserable. <laughs> I want every activity to destroy me, my confidence. I believe with the world that my self-esteem is important to me and how I perceive myself from the opinions of others and the negative activities that come across my desk. That's who I really am, and I like being depressed. All right. Or I can say, so esteem is who I am. Now, Barbara King, how many of you know about Barbara King? I know Maggie does. You remember you idolized her, you loved her. She's an icon in the New Thought movement. She's actually it was, uh, she's a New Thought bishop. Uh, the Evangelicans or somebody uh, called her one day. She's so well known, and they said, we're going to take you through a ceremony, and you're going to become the first New Thought bishop in the world. And she is a bishop. She's mm -hmm. awesome. She's in her 80s. But she came to our Anton conference and we invited her and she spoke. And I come, here's this lady here that's got so much to offer in her mid-80s or whatever she is. I don't know. I'm sorry, Barbara, if you watch this. I don't know how old you are. But I know you're in your 80s. I know <laughs> but she, she said she gave this talk. It was so important to me to listen to this. She said, there is nothing to heal in this world. There is nothing to heal. There's only something to reveal. Wow. Let's repeat that. There is nothing to heal. There is only something to reveal. That is so outstanding. It's awesome. And I took the notes real quickly because I wanted to remember it. And what does that mean? It means that no matter what comes across our desk, what comes across our life, that we look within it at the mystery of what's happening. And we don't put a judgment call and saying, this is a bad thing. We look at it and say, this is a good thing. Because there's something in this activity, in this circumstances, in this relationship, that, that needs, something needs to be revealed. And what is revealed is the hidden mystery of the good that's in everything we see. We can get into that mindset that everything that happens to us is for our greater good. Just Then we can have an abundant a uh, joy-filled, uh, joy-filled love. Um, oh gosh, I, I love this stuff. <laughs> but I'm going to try not to go into space. <laughs> I almost did, just a moment ago. Um, uh, Robert talks about, and, uh, and I will write this down, Robert talks about a story, Robert's an intuitive uh, and astrological uh, counselor. And, you, and what they do is read. Now whether you accept this or not, that's okay. But people come to him, and he picks up their vibrations, and he can tell them the story of what's going on. It's kind of cool. I don't know if you've ever been to one of these guys. I did once. It was kind of nice. Um, but anyway, uh, Amanda comes to him, and uh, she's a student of metaphysical teachings, and she uses the law of attraction, and she's disturbed. So she says, Robert, I have a problem. I need a reading. She said, I'm pregnant. I'm six months pregnant, and my son's name is Blake. And he's got Down syndrome. She said, I practice the law of attraction. I've attracted into my life. Now, here's the stuff. Here we go. I practice the law of attraction, and I have a beautiful home, a job that to die for. I've got three beautiful, healthy kids. I've got all kinds of money in the back, and my husband, Stephen, he's awesome, and he loves his job. How is it possible for me to have attracted into my experience a youngster, a baby with Down syndrome who's deformed? Wow. There's self-esteem consciousness, isn't it? So Robert, being an intuitive, picked up the vibes from Blake. He was having almost a conversation energetically with Blake. He said he, such, he, he felt such a living presence that was so much of compassion and love that this soul was there for, on purpose. Absolutely. Was there on purpose. And, and uh, this Amanda said, all of her life she's shut out the negative. She cut off any pain and suffering. She wouldn't listen to her friends. 